Good morning. Happy New Year, everyone. It is 2020. It is the second day of 2020. Like, the first day just kind of flew by. And here we are, two days in to 2020. So does it feel any different? Do you guys feel different? <laughs> I don't. It's like it's like when you have a birthday and somebody is like, so, do you feel older today? I'm like, no. <laughs> It still kind of feels like 2019, right? <laughs> it's it's all the same. It's all the same. So, it's not. It's not the same. I digress because it is not the same. 2020, this is a brand new year, brand new opportunities, so many good things. I feel like this upcoming year is going to be amazing. I... um. I've been feeling it for a while now, actually. I have been, you know, kind of counting down the days to the new year, which is something that I normally don't do. I don't really celebrate. I mean, I do celebrate. That's, don't get me wrong. But when it comes to like New Year's and setting resolutions, that's not really something that I do. But I don't know. This new year feels, feels good. It feels like there is a lot of good stuff coming. And I know for a fact of some really good things that are coming. Um, but I feel like in the long run, like we've got lots of great things in the works at Jesse James Speeds. We've got lots of exciting adventures planned and I'm looking forward to all of it. I'm really looking forward to 2020 and whatever 2020 is gonna bring. Hi, Terry. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Miss Kelly. How are you guys? So, I don't really set New Year's resolutions. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, they, they tend to get ignored by mid-February, right? I, I think I read that like 80% of New Year's resolutions are um, <laughs> not kept. 80%. There's only 20% of you out there that are actually keeping your New Year's resolutions and you're only keeping them until like the middle of the year, which is still really good, right? So I don't set a New Year's resolution, but I do want to set my intentions for the year, which I think is different, right? So setting your intentions, you can do this like not just for New Year's, but all the time, right? You set your intentions for you know, what you want out of the new year. I, some of my intentions for 2020 are a little bit more self-care. You guys know I ended the, I ended the year being sick. I was really sick too. And, um, you know, it, it gave me an opportunity. Nobody likes to get sick, but it gave me an opportunity to kind of sit back and remind myself that if I'm not well, <laughs> I'm not doing anybody any good, right? I mean, I'm here and I'm like going through the motions, but if I'm not here in the moment with you guys or with my family or wherever, you know, if I'm not taking care of myself, I'm not giving the best of myself to everyone else. So some of my intentions for 2020 are to, um, you know, take some better care of myself, even just small things like changing up my you know, my face routine at night and in the mornings. I mean, just small things, those small intentions just to uh, be more gracious with myself. That's always my intention. That's like on the very top of my list is, is giving myself grace um, as well as other people. But so I don't do New Year's resolutions, but for those of you who do and for those of you who are like me that are setting intentions, jewelry is a really good way to kind of remind you, right? You need those reminders if you're setting, um, you know, if you're setting new intentions or setting new goals or you're making your resolutions for the new year, it's great to have a way to kind of remind yourself of what those intentions are. And jewelry is one of those things where you've got it, you look at it and you remember, oh, that's, you know, when I look at this necklace, it reminds me that I've set the intention to be kinder to myself, you know, or to be more patient with my family or whatever it happens to be, to be more creative, right? I mean, it can be things like that. It doesn't just have to be, um, you know, self-care stuff. That just happens to be what's on my mind at the moment because I, I definitely need to take care of myself a little bit better than I had been doing in 2019. So, hi, Jamie. Hi, Michelle. I'm so glad to see everybody. Janice, you guys, I hope everybody had a safe and fun New Year's. Mine was very low-key. I did pajamas, face mask, 
<laughs> the couch. That was kind of <laughs> that's that's kind of my my celebration. In years past, I have really partied. This year, I did not. This year, I was just I don't know. I'm still trying to get over the the sick and just go slow with things. So, all right. So speaking of setting your reminders, your intentions, and and everything, the jewelry. That's what we're talking about today, right? We're talking about reminder jewelry. So we're going to create a necklace today that is going to be one of those reminder pieces that kind of helps to remind you of the goals that you have set for yourself into the new year. And this is a really special necklace um, because of the color. And that's something that I wanted to, to talk to you guys about because I feel like one of the goals here at Jesse James Beads for the new year is we're going to kind of take a deep dive into color. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. So we're going to talk about in this new year, we're going to talk about color in depth in a way that maybe we haven't in the past. Like you can go to the website and you can shop by color, which is one of my very favorite ways to shop on the Jesse James Speeds website. Um, and you can see what all of the different colors represent and what they mean. So we're going to talk about that like more because that's Color is everything when it comes to jewelry, right? Color is everything when it comes to beads. Color is everything when it comes to fashion as well. So we're going to talk over the next year about color and how to incorporate color into your wardrobe, how you can mix and match, and how you can really kind of take your creative designs to the next level. So that's what we're going to start with today, actually. We're going to start with some of the beautiful Swarovski. You guys remember, this was one of my very, very favorite sets. Um, the Sapphire Swarovski, that Lux collection you can go and shop on over on Jesse James Beads. We're going to use some of those Swarovski Sapphire colored beads because some of you know, a lot of you know, actually, that the color for the Pantone color for 2020 is classic blue. And blue is such a great color to start out with. I, not just because it's the color of the year, but because blue kind of represents cleansing and newness and it's calming and relaxing. And I really feel like instead of going 90 miles a minute into the new year, like maybe we should ease into this and like really take stock in everything that's going on, really look at our design, look at the way we're doing things, kind of take a step back and relax just a little bit, right? So that's what blue is. Blue is all about relaxing. It is um, one of those colors. I pulled up some of the meanings for blue because it represents a lot of different things, but blue is, it's really popular among like, you'll see it in hospitals and um, churches and Let's see, where were some of the other things that it said? It's just one of those, it's like, it symbolizes loyalty, strength, wisdom, and calm. So you mix that calm in there. I think that's why they use it in hospitals. Um, but anyway, it's one of those colors that everybody loves. Everybody loves blue, right? Um, so, sorry, I know we're chatting a lot, but this is good stuff, right? It's good stuff. <laughs> so... I, I have had an opportunity to kind of really look at color in depth because I'm working on the Pinterest page for Jesse James Speeds. If you are not following Jesse James Speeds on Pinterest, please go do that as soon as you're done here. I'm taking all of the designs, I'm taking everything that we've got and I'm breaking it down into colors. Blue was the first one that I started with and amazing how many blue designs that there are. Our customer creations, there is so much blue jewelry right? It's beautiful. Everybody loves blue. Everybody is drawn to blue. Then I moved on to like red and yellow and orange and had a definite decrease in the designs. So my challenge to you before we get to the piece today that is in blue is if you are not following us over on Pinterest, please do that. Number one, do that. Number two, while you're creating this year, Think about colors that we don't use a lot in our designs, right? We use lots of blue, we use lots of green, we use lots of neutrals. But yellow, red, orange, we need those. We need those represented in jewelry, right? We need that represented in fashion. Those are fun, bright, just 
full of life colors. So my challenge to you is to, as you're creating, start incorporating some colors that maybe you don't normally use. Red, yellow, orange, those are ones I had a hard time finding. You know, we, we had a selection, but there's not nearly as many as there are for the blue and green. So take that as your food for thought and come up with some red, yellow, orange, some of those colors and post those over on the secret stash board on Pinterest so that I can put those into the other boards and they get spread across Pinterest and across the internet. Your designs are gonna be seen by everybody. So it benefits everyone. You're helping me, I'm helping you. It's all good. So, Tina, thank you. Tina says, chatting is what sets your sessions above and beyond. I appreciate that because sometimes I feel like I get too chatty and, um, and I don't want to turn people off. But we've got good stuff to talk about, right? And if we're going to talk about color this year, we're going to do some talking. So, all right, today's necklace, getting down to the good stuff. Today's necklace is blue, sapphire blue. This is um, some of my most favorite Swarovski beads, and what we're really creating is not the necklace itself, but we are, we are, sorry, creating the pendant itself. Okay, so this is an easy one, but this is a great way to kind of jump into the new designs for your 2020. So let's get started with it, shall we? I'm excited, guys. I'm excited to show this one to you. Whoa. Okay, so one of my intentions for 2020 is to tighten up. <laughs> I say it all the time, I need to tighten up the tripod and I have yet to do it. So that's one of my intentions. Okay, so let's take a look just for a second, just to kind of remind you guys of the Swarovski, this beautiful blue. Oh, it's so pretty. Is it not just the most beautiful? I love blue. Blue is just so calming and so relaxing and it's just, it really is one of those colors that kind of works on everybody, right? Because like yellow is phenomenal, but I cannot wear yellow. <laughs> and I know I'm not alone. Yellow and orange, I have a hard time pulling those colors off with my skin tone, but blue, everybody can wear blue. So definitely go check out the beautiful blue Swarovski over on Jesse James Speeds and everything else that is over on the website. Okay. And, um, well, I'll save that to the end. We'll talk about something else at the end. Just don't let me forget, you guys. So for the design today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a pendant and we're gonna use our artistic wire mandrel. And we're actually gonna use this, the handle portion of the mandrel and then one of the smaller circles for this. So we're gonna create, let me show you like just a quick little drawing of it because I didn't get the picture posted. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of the large Swarovski beads that's gonna be in the middle. So we're gonna start here. Well, we're not really gonna start there, but this is gonna be our center bead. And then we're going to do a circular shaped wire here and we're gonna make it a double, right? So we're gonna do two circular shaped wires and we're gonna have lots of things hanging off of them this direction. We're gonna link this together with some jump rings and then I'm gonna string it onto a piece of fairy silk, but you can use fairy silk or um, bitty chain or anything else that you want to use. So this is gonna be an easy pendant, but this is where we're going, okay? I just don't have a finished one to show you. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna need some 18 gauge wire and I am using, I'm actually using artistic wire for this. And, <coughs> excuse me, I've cut a really long section of this. You really only need about five inches and we're gonna cut some of this off. So you're not gonna use all of it. Um, if you want to just work off of the spool, uh, you know, of, off of the bundle of wire, you can do that. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our circle and we're gonna use the handle portion of our artistic wire mandrel. If you guys remember this tool, it's one of my favorites. It's interchangeable. I've got the circles on it but instead of using the actual mandrel part, we're using this. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lay that 18 gauge wire across the surface of the handle and we're gonna guide it all the way around. And when we get to the other side, we're just gonna continue to guide that wire. I didn't crisscross or anything like that. I've just you know, taken the ends and guided it all the way around. So when I take it off, I've got a perfect circle. You can see I have more wire than I need on either side, but I do have that nice circle that is pretty much intact for the most part, right? 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with my flush cutter and I'm gonna cut right in the center, okay? And so that's gonna get rid of the excess that we don't need and when you hold it together, you've, you've still got that nice circle shape. The only problem is, is that with the flush cutter, only one side was cut flush. So you can see the other side of the wire it has that kind of funny point on it. I'm gonna come in with the flush cutter and just barely trim that off. So now both sides are flush, okay? So this is circle number one, okay? And, <clears throat> excuse me, I still have a little bit of a cough, I apologize. We're gonna put this on the block before we do anything else with it. And we are going to tap this with our nylon hammer just to work harden it just a bit. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna work harden. Make sure you do both sides. Okay, so that is one. I'm just gonna sit it to the side for just a second and now we wanna do the same thing again, but we want a smaller circle this time. And let's see, what size circle do I want? So what I'm gonna do to decide what circle, and you can see I've marked my mandrel with a permanent marker to tell me, it's kind of wearing off, but to tell me the millimeter sizes of each one of the circles. And I want a smaller circle to go inside this one, so I'm gonna put this over the mandrel here, and don't think I want, I think I want this one. So this one on the bottom is a 27 and a half millimeter. This one is a 25 millimeter. So I think we're gonna go with a 25. If that's wrong, we can always change it. I can't remember exactly which one that I used, but it's all right, no problem. So we're just gonna lay again another piece of wire onto the mandrel on that 25 millimeter section and just guiding the wire around all the way around and laying the sides down, okay, just like that. So when I take it off, again, I have that circle shape and I've got the extra wire on the edges, come in with the cutter tool, trim it to get rid of the excess wire. I'll save those pieces for something else. And again, only one side was cut flush, so I need to just barely, barely trim off. Okay, and then I'm gonna place this on the inside here and see if that's the size that I want. So laying that down, that actually looks a little, I don't know, let's see, that might be right. Yeah, because I wanna have enough circle, it's gotta be big enough so that our, our main bead here in the middle, there's enough room for it. It's not gonna squeeze onto it so that there's some movement. We also have some beads that are gonna hang here and some beads that are gonna hang on the bottom. So we wanna be sure that we have enough room for all of that, okay? So sitting the beads to the side and I need to put this one on the block real quick just to work harden it. And Just tapping it a bit. Do both sides. All right, so now, as much as I love this perfect, <laughs> this perfect circle, <laughs> and Sarah says concentric rings, this is beautiful, I know. I wish that I could keep these this beautiful, but we are actually going to turn loops on either side. So we're gonna kind of change the structure just a little bit, but it really was important that we started with an almost perfect circle in the beginning because I didn't wanna short change the length any. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our small bell making pliers for this. And on one side, on each one of these, we are going to turn a loop outwards, okay? And I'm gonna use the smallest 
mandrel of the bell making pliers grabbing one side and I'm just gonna turn a loop. If this loop is too big for you, because even, even with the small bell making pliers, that's still a pretty, that's a, that's a pretty large loop. Um, if that's too big of a loop for you and you want to bring this down just a bit, you can use your round nose pliers and just choose to go a little bit um, closer to the tip, okay? So that you can have even more of that circle because this definitely is gonna take away, right, from the circle. All right, so I'm only gonna do one side for now because we are gonna thread on some beads to this, but after we get the beads on this, we're gonna do a loop on the other side as well just to keep everything from falling off, and those are gonna be our attachment points, okay? Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna use the small bell making pliers to turn a loop just on one side, okay, so that our beads don't fall off as we're threading things on. So let's actually do some of that now. Let's go ahead and thread some beads onto this bottom ring, and then we're gonna wire wrap some bicones for the next step up, okay? So for the bottom, I want to kind of incorporate a little bit of everything. So I've got some Bicones that were with the one of the Swarovski mixes with the um, that beautiful sapphire. So there are some clear Swarovski. These look to be about an eight millimeter Swarovski. I didn't check, but I know it's bigger than a six. So this is either an eight or a ten. I'm pretty sure it's an eight. And some glass beads. We're going to use these as some spacers. There are some other kind of daisy spacers we're going to alternate with those and there were some little tassels right can't be jesse james beads creation without some tassels i love the mini tassels so that's what we're going to use so we are going to give me just a second i just want to i've got the picture pulled up over here of the finished piece just want to be sure that i get everything on here in the order that I had it originally so that it, it looks like the picture that I eventually will have posted for you guys. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is see these little rondelle beads. These are glass. They have that um, beautiful metallic kiss to them. I'm gonna use these as spacers. They're so, so pretty. It's just a rondelle with a large hole, so it's definitely gonna clear that 18 gauge wire. I'm gonna thread that on. Okay, and then the next thing I'm gonna thread on is the wire wrapped loop that is on the top of our bicone. Now, you're not missing out. Everybody loves to see me wire wrap. It's so weird, but <laughs> I'm just gonna go with it. We're gonna do some of these, so don't worry, okay? We're just, we've these were already done, so we don't have to sit here forever. I'm gonna do some of the smaller ones, so we are gonna do some actual wire wrapping here in just a little bit. All right, so we've thread on one of our bicones. We're gonna thread on one of our metal beads to kind of mix everything up a bit. And then we're gonna thread on one of our tassels. Okay, so that's gonna be our pattern. We're gonna do the glass rondelle, the bicone, the metal bead, and a tassel, okay? So we're just gonna repeat that. Threading on our beads. I really like the movement of this. If you, if it's too much, if the tassels and the bicones are too much movement, because some people are not, you know, that, that can be a lot. Whoops, I forgot the metal bead. Um, you can just thread on beads. You don't have to have the dangles, right? You can just continue to, to thread on a straight line of beads. That would be fine too. I just like the extra movement. I love when my pieces of jewelry catch the light in different light. <laughs> like when you're shopping in a department store, that's like the best light in the whole world. Outside is probably the next best light. I just love to, the way beads look, right? When they sparkle and shine. And the best way to get the full spectrum of a bead is to let it be kind of free flowing. So, all right, so we're just continuing our pattern. Threading these on and got one more tassel here. Okay, 
So now when you look at this, one thing that you might notice is that it, it's, it doesn't start and stop the same way. Like I continued the pattern all the way through to the end, right? I didn't come to the middle and then flip over and repeat the pattern, just mirror imaged. I went all the way down. That's totally a design choice. It's up to you whether you want to do it that way or not. A lot of people want the symmetry. So when they get to the middle, they repeat this section, just going the opposite direction, okay? Just keep that in mind. It's just small little things like that that maybe you don't think about when you are creating a piece and how different it'll look okay so we have all the beads on this one so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and turn that loop on the other side making sure that our beads are locked in and we're not going to lose anything and I am going to take this even with the beads and pop this back over on the mandrel just a bit and what I like to do is take the two loops in my first finger and my thumb and just kind of give it a squeeze just a little bit just to make sure that I still have that nice round shape, okay? Just, just on the off chance that as you're working with the wire and you're threading your beads on, you're heating it up with your fingers and it may move out of shape for you, even if you work hardened it, okay? So this is just a, one of those little extra insurance things that I do. So this is our bottom for our pendant, we're gonna sit this one to the side and we are gonna do some wire wrapping now because our next layer of our pendant is gonna have these little bicones. And I have a selection of that beautiful blue, that sapphire blue, and then the beautiful kind of smoky gray that goes with it. So we need four more of these. We need two of the blue and two of the gray. I saved them for you guys so we could do them together. <laughs> and then we are gonna have to wire wrap our bead, right? So I'm saving this one for last. All right, so for the little bicones, I'm just gonna use some head pins. I'm using some really thin head pins, but um, the, the standard size head pin, which I don't even know right off the top of my head what the measurement is on it, is, is perfectly fine to use as well, okay? So let's start with the blue ones. I'm just gonna thread Actually, we'll go ahead and thread all of these on so that they are all ready to go. And I'll actually sit these to the side just so that we can pay full attention to the wrapped loops that we're gonna create on the top of these. So we'll get to do this four times, which trust me is better than 14 because I've got, well, I think it was 15. I don't remember exactly, but there's a bunch. <laughs> I didn't want you guys to have to sit here for the whole thing. So let me grab my tools. I've got kind of a mess going on this morning. So I have stuff everywhere. Starting my new year out with a big fat mess in my studio. Okay. So start with one of these. We've got that bead all the way down on the bottom of our head pin. And we're gonna grab that bead right at the top with the very tip of our chain nose pliers, okay? With the very, very, very tip. If you come back here, you're creating a larger space, right? For your wire wraps. So if you want more wire wraps, you can always bring that back. That's something that I don't ever say. I just kind of figure that you, you kind of know that, but just in case you, you didn't really think that all the way through, <laughs> I always come down here so that I use this, the least amount of wire wraps possible because I don't want the wire wraps to be, um, I don't want it to take over the design, right? I want it to be about the bead and not the wire. But if you want the wire wraps to be part of your design and you want to show those off, come back a little bit on your pliers. Just a little tip, you never know who might needed to might have needed to hear that this morning. Okay, so grabbing that bead right at the tip, bending the wire 90 degrees, that's going across the top of the pliers, okay? So I do have that little bit of space. So when I take it off of the pliers, you can see, when I put my finger behind it so you can see it, there is enough room there for some wire wraps. So now I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers. Simple loops would also work for this Miss Joan. Hi, darling. Happy New Year. I hadn't talked to you in a couple days. Um, yeah, you could do simple loops for this. The only reason that I don't ever do simple loops is because my simple loops are never as pretty as my wrapped loops. But hey, feel free to do whatever you are the most comfortable with, right? Either one will work. So I'm going up and over. I'm going to spin those pliers around 
bring that wire all the way around okay switching hands and then I'm gonna use my chain nose pliers to wire wrap and I've got enough room for three wraps okay so there's my loop and then I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool trim off the tail and sit that one down it's ready to go let's do three more you know what I actually am um, so motorcraft says even though you're not creating your own head pins today would you please tell us again what wire you prefer to use I'm gonna I'm gonna do one with this speed right here um, a head pin just would not work because the hole is a little bit large for the size head pins that I'm using so we are gonna create one just hold on we're we're gonna do it and I'll tell you all about the wire all right so Grabbing that wire right as it's exiting the bead, bending 90 degrees. Coming in with the round nose pliers. You guys, I'm just sitting here thinking, doesn't it, doesn't it sound nice that I have my voice back? <laughs> the past two or three times you guys have seen me, I could barely talk. It's so, it's so nice to actually be able to talk to you guys. All right. It's funny because I get laryngitis at least two or three times a year and I always joke that it's like God's way of telling me to shut up because I talk so much <laughs> and God's like, okay, you need a break. Just hush. The universe has had enough now. <laughs> All right. There's that one. Okay. So there's two. We've got two more to go. Grabbing the wire, bending at 90 degrees, coming in with the round nose pliers up and over, spinning them around. <laughs> Joan says she's still not great with wraps loops. She does messy loops to hide that. Messy loops are so great. And you're right, messy loops are so good for hiding wrapped loops that are not, <laughs> that are not perfect. I kind of love a messy wrap to be honest with you, but I'm so, what's the word? I'm so picky. It's really hard for me to like let go and let that organic messy wrap take over. I have to like really force myself to do that. It's like picking beads up randomly. I always end up picking up a pattern instead of randomly. I have to really force myself to like let go mentally in order to do that. All right, so grabbing with the round nose pliers up and over. Spinning the pliers around, coming on around, switching hands, and we're going to wire wrap. All right, there's our loop. Trimming off the tail, and there we go. So, what is really cool about this is we're going to kind of do clusters like all of these little bicones are gonna to hang together on this. So if you are uncomfortable with your wrapped loops or you're uncomfortable with your simple loops, you're not even gonna be able to see them, right? They're gonna be all together. Nobody's gonna notice whether your loops are funky or you know not perfect circles. This is a great way to bundle up your beads and hide all of the stuff you don't wanna see. <laughs> <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> okay so what we're gonna do is <clears throat> after I can stop coughing we're gonna thread these on alternating the blue and that smoky gray and we're just gonna thread on as many as I have I can't remember I think there's six of one and seven of the other or seven of one and eight and I don't know but we're gonna thread these on and create this really fun kind of cha-cha style portion of our pendant and this is definitely going to catch the light and all the fuzz that I seem to pick up on this bead mat I have got to get a new bead mat all right so I'm just alternating the colors threading them all on here I'm kind of holding them out with my fingers so that you can see them but once I let go and they kind of cluster together you're definitely not going to notice any of that wire wrapping or whether it's good or bad or whatever so definitely a great way to hide all of the imperfections 
Okay, so just alternating and all of these on there. All right, so now we have this really cool cluster and honestly, I wish that I had had two of these um, Swarovski mixes because Sorry, I'm just pulling the fuzz from my bead mat off of the beads because this would look really cool even fuller, right? Had even doubled up the amount of these beads to do twice as many. I think it would be really, really cool. I'm just, I really love cluster situations, whether they are cluster earrings or pendants or any opportunity to have clusters of beads, particularly Swarovski, more is always better as far as I'm concerned. So I would really love to fill this up. If I had more bicones, I definitely would. Okay, so same thing over here. We're going to come back in with our um, bell making pliers just to create a loop over on this side just so that our beads don't fall off. Okay, and again, I'm going to pop this back over here on the mandrel and just give it a squeeze to kind of bring back that round shape just in case we've lost any of it. Okay, so there's our little horseshoe for the inside that's going to hang right in here. So we've got lots going on with this pendant. Okay, all that's going to hang. I know it looks like a hot mess at the moment, but trust me, it'll all come together. <laughs> and then we're going to have this guy hanging in the center. It's going to look really pretty. It looks like a mess sitting down, right, laying flat. But that's where we're going. So sitting those to the side, and now we're going to create our, um, our wrapped loop for this guy. We're going to create our own head pin. And so this is where we're going to talk about the wire because we were asked. So my favorite wire to create my own head pins is the 22 gauge wire. I use German style wire. Um, you can use any gauge that you want to, but 22 gauge is my go-to for this. This is way more wire than you would ever need. <laughs> You really only need about four inches of this. Three and a half inches will do. You don't need what I have just cut. But I use the 22 gauge wire for this so that the knot on the end is not huge and big and bulky. However, if you've got a big bead and you've got a large hole, you might need a larger knot. And so stepping up to 20 gauge is just as good. It just makes a little bit larger of a knot. And that is also true with the smaller gauge wires. I love to make knotted head pins with 24 gauge wire for smaller beads. And of course that makes a smaller knot. So you can actually do this in any size wire that you want, but 22 is just the wire that I always grab for just about everything. Um, if you're more comfortable with the 20, go for it, okay? All right, so to do this, we've got a section of our wire. Oh, and it's probably worth mentioning that um, I use German style wire instead of artistic wire for this just because the German style wire is not a dead soft wire. It's a half hard wire, meaning that it has more structure to it. It's not as pliable and bendy. And I just feel like it does better with the wire wrapping. I have more control. Sometimes with the artistic wire, when you're doing wire wrapping or you're making wrapped loops, um, your loops will tend to be wonky. So if you're having trouble with your wire wrapped loops, take a look at what kind of wire you're using. If you're using artistic wire, that might be part of the problem. Try a German style wire instead and see if that makes a difference for you. Um, the softer wires are just, it never creates a clean loop or clean wrap as far as my experience is concerned. Okay, so I've got the tail end of that wire, and I don't know if you noticed while I was chatting, I trimmed the end of that off with my flush cutter to make it flush, okay? Just one of those things, those little extra things that I do. Using my round nose pliers, I'm grabbing that wire right at the tip, very, very close to the end here. And I'm gonna wrap that wire around the tip of the pliers once, and then I'm going a second time. And this time that second loop or the second wrap around is going underneath that first 
wrap around and I'm gonna stop right where I see where the flush cut of that wire is, okay? Grab that wire, hold on to it. Don't take it off the pliers yet. Take the tail end of it and bend it out this direction, okay? So when you take it off, this is what you've got. Put my finger behind it so you can see it better, okay? Now, your instinct, even though the wire is running this direction, a lot of times people want to take the wire and take the tail end of it and come through this direction, right? So let's just pretend for a second that this is the tail end of the wire, that I bend it around backwards and go this way, right, through the loop. Don't do that. You will not create a loop or a, a knot. You're just going to create a mess. Um, it's really, this is probably the most important step. When you're taking the tail end of your wire, you want to go, okay, wire come in this direction. You just want to turn around and go that, go like that. <laughs> I don't really know how else to explain it. Makes this really funny little lasso, okay? So now you want to come in with your nylon jaw pliers. Absolutely essential for this. You cannot do this with just regular pliers. It will strip your wire, so you have to hold it with your nylon jaw pliers. Grab the wire right next to those two loops, okay, so that the two loops are actually sitting on the side surface of the pliers. Then come in with your chain nose pliers. I like to use bent chain nose pliers for this, but it doesn't really make much of a difference. Grab that wire, pull it through, and pull tight. Two things are happening. Number one, you're creating this beautiful knot that's like a little rosette. That's why I call it a beautiful knot because it's pretty. <laughs> Most knots are not pretty. This one is. It looks like a little flower. The second thing that's happening other than the fact that you are tying a knot is you are running this wire through those nylon jaw pliers. So you're also work hardening this wire just a tiny bit, just enough, right? It doesn't take a lot. All right, so taking it off of the tool, we've got our little head pin ready to go. We're gonna thread on our bead. Bring it right down. Okay, so you can see with that 22 gauge wire, it's not an obtrusive knot, right? It's just the same as if you were using a ball head pin. It's pretty much the same as far as size is concerned as just a ball head pin on a, um, on a head pin. So it doesn't take over. It's just there serving a purpose, but it's also pretty. Grabbing the wire right at the tip with the chain nose pliers, same thing, we're just gonna do a wrapped loop, bending that wire 90 degrees. I'm gonna come in with the round nose pliers, going up and over, spinning around, coming on around. I'm gonna switch hands, and you can see I have so much extra wire. Got a wire wrap, right? Take that off. We've got our loop, and I'm gonna trim off the tail. And this is actually the perfect amount of, <laughs> this is probably the length that we should have started with with our wire. So I do have a tail end of wire here that I can use for another knotted head pin on another project. So I'm just gonna sit that to the side. Okay, so we have our beautiful focal bead that's going to go in the middle here. He's going to hang down this way. Oh, no, 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 no. I have a feeling that we may have made our, this section, it might be too small. But you know what? We don't know till we put it together and it's an easy fix. And that's okay because it's good for you guys to see the mistakes that happen because you can see just how quickly we can fix it, right? Okay, so to attach all of this together, we're going to use a series of jump rings. And if you don't want to use jump rings for this, you don't have to. You can use a piece of chain. It's whatever works for you. But I have taken some six millimeter and four millimeter jump rings and I've made myself a little chain. So I've used a six, a four, a six, a four, a six, a four, a six, a four. So I do have a center jump ring that's going to be right here. And that center jump ring, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. If you're putting this together as you're working, then you're not gonna be opening and closing these jump rings over and over again. Um, but it is what it is at the moment, so I do have to open this up. I don't normally recommend opening and closing your jump rings more than you have to, but I'm gonna go ahead and thread that on our center bead here. So now what I essentially have is this, right? So when you lay it down and you look at it, you've got 
your bead's gonna hang there in the center. I'm really afraid this is gonna be too short. That's okay, we'll work it out. So, on either end, I've got a six millimeter jump ring. We're gonna open up the six millimeter jump ring and we are gonna thread on one of the loops on our pendant, right? And then we're gonna thread on the bigger one right behind it, okay? Then we're gonna close that back. Now we're gonna do that on the other side with the other six millimeter jump ring. And I have created a big fat mess is what I have done. <laughs> All right, hold on. Oh, I've got those going in opposite directions. So they need to be going in the same direction. Sorry about that. I thought I had them, but. Okay, whoops. There, that makes more sense. Okay, so those are laying essentially one right on top of each other. You know, the shorter, the smaller one laying on top of the larger one. And they're hooked together with the same six millimeter jump ring. Same thing over on the other side. I'm just going to open up this six millimeter jump ring on the other end and thread them on the same way so that they are laying just like that. All right, so now when you hold it up, oh, no, we had enough room. Hooray. However, I don't like where, I don't like where that bead is hanging. It's too far to the top. So let's add an extra jump ring in between there, shall we? I just think that it needs to come down a bit. So I'm going to open this back up. Take this guy off. <laughs> Make a big mess. No, it's fine. Just opening and closing some jump rings here just to make a small adjustment. And I'm gonna go ahead and close this back because we're just gonna use another jump ring and I feel like I've opened this one too many times. So I'm gonna put it just like that. We're gonna add an extra four millimeter jump ring here just to give it a little bit of extra length so that it is hanging down a little bit more. So that's the good thing about jump rings. I always have an assortment of jump ring sizes on hand so that I can use my jump rings not just for connections, but if you need extra length, a four millimeter or a three millimeter jump ring is very unobtrusive, which is cool. Joan says, you just put them in the opposite direction to show us what not to do. <laughs> I am always showing you what not to do, let me tell you. All right, so I'm just gonna hook that four millimeter jump ring to the center again and hold it up one more time and look at it and decide if that's enough length. I think it is, I think it is. I'm happy with that. I could use a six millimeter there instead. Hmm, what do you guys think? I still think it's a little short, right? I want this bead to come down just a tiny more tiny bit more. Let's, let's switch it. Why not? So let's get rid of that four millimeter jump ring. Whoop. All right, let's use a six. So you're just kind of getting to see a little bit of the creative process because I have slept since I made this and I don't know. Yesterday it looked different. Today Okay, so there's a six millimeter. Now let's hold it up and see. Yeah, I like that much better. So the six miller, millimeter was just enough length, right, to put it exactly where I wanted it to hang. Just needed a tiny extra bit. Just that extra two millimeters was enough to really put that down where I want it. Okay, so I'm gonna add one more jump ring to this just because that center jump ring is facing us. I need a jump ring that is facing side to side so that I can thread it on. I'm gonna use some of this beautiful blue fairy silk, but like I said in the beginning, you don't have to use fairy silk for this. This project was more about the pendant than the actual necklace portion, so when it comes to um, what you actually attach this to, the sky is really the limit. Let me grab another jump ring. Excuse me. And I'm going to thread this on. Well, I'm going to put this jump ring on there first. You could make a bale if you wanted to out of some wire. 
which is probably what I should have done just to show you guys how to make a wire bell. Remind me, we'll do that in another video. And then I'm gonna thread this on to the fairy silk and I'm actually gonna double it up to make this one kind of short on the mannequin. Um, but if I was gonna actually wear this, I wouldn't double it up unless I wanted to add some extra length. Well, if I can get that to thread through there. <laughs> Come on now. All right, there we go. So thread that on and I'm gonna grab a bust so that you guys can see this on the bust because it hangs so much prettier than it lays. <laughs> All right, hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I'm gonna flip you around <clears throat> so that you're not just looking at <laughs> A blank mat while I tie this to the bust. Lori says she likes the look of all the jump rings. It fancies it up. I do too. I do too. I use jump rings for so many different things. Um, if you like the look of jump rings, they you can group them together and they make really fun spacers too. Um, you know, like a in between beads, like five or six jump rings in between beads they just make kind of a funky cool look all right hold on so it's still not hanging exactly the way i want it to and i know why i'm gonna show it to you okay i'm gonna show it to you and i'm gonna show you where i would make i would make the change and all this time I've been fussing over that bead. It's not the bead. So let me show it to you, okay? So it still looks really pretty, right? This is gonna be, this is a pendant that I would wear all over the place. I think it, it, it came together really, really well. Looks beautiful with that blue fairy silk, but it's not the bead. It's not the bead that's driving me crazy. It is that second hook. You know, that second layer of our pendant, it's too long, right? So all of our cluster beads are laying on top of all of these beads. So what I would do to fix this is this smaller section. I needed to go up one more. <laughs> one. <laughs> Wanda Hansen says, I always Google like a 12 year old when Sarah says she's going to grab a bust. Okay, Wanda, you're my favorite. You're my favorite person ever. That's so funny because I, I'm so like that. I'm, that's like my ridiculously silly sense of humor. You can ask Joan. Joan has that sense of humor as well. And I'm forever saying things and then like I have to really mentally force myself to not laugh because I'm trying to be serious. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to be professional, right? <laughs> but sometimes I just say things and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so anyway, back to the necklace. So what I would do, <laughs> what I would do is this smaller circle, I would go up one more on the mandrel to make it. So we used the 25 millimeter. I would actually go up to the 23 millimeter to make that, that loop right here right? So that would create it. It would shorten up the space. There would still be enough space in between the bead and this and probably why I used the four millimeter jump ring yesterday, right? Because I didn't need those extra two millimeters, but I do need the extra two millimeters here because the extra two millimeters is going to lift up this middle section and it's going to pull those beads off of the top of these beads that are here. So if you're going to recreate this one, don't forget this, okay, at the end, not at the end, <laughs> come to the end of this video first to remind yourself that this guy right here, it needs to be a 23 and not a 25. That's going to make a huge, huge difference in the way those beads lay. So lesson learned, right? I should have made a note for myself, but it's okay. I'm okay with it, right? I'm okay with showing you guys the mistakes that I make because the process is, it's all learning, right? Even 
even what I'm showing you guys. I'm learning as I'm going and you know, you're getting to see me learn something. I hope I'm teaching you something. It's all a great, you know, a great circle of knowledge, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Joan says, my brain is constantly in the gutter. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But that's why I love you. <laughs> All right. So that was it for the project today. This is a great necklace. This blue kitten you relaxed, right? We're going to ease into 2020 and we're really going to think about things. This is your reminder piece. Make yourself a reminder piece and whatever color really speaks to you to remind you of the intentions that you have set for yourself for the new year. And that's going to be it, you know, your jewelry. That's jewelry is some powerful stuff. You guys don't even get me started. I could write a book and one day maybe I will. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Couldn't you attach it one jump ring up? You absolutely could Michelle. So like there are changes that you can make, you know, just little tweaks here and there, change the size of the jump ring, change the placement of the jump ring, you know, making those little adjustments is all going to help put things exactly where you want them to be. And that's, that's like, to me, that's the best way to learn. I'm going to grab a bust, right? I'm going to grab a bust and put it actually on the bust as I'm working, because that's a really good way to see how everything hangs. So if you've got a neck that you can work on as you are creating a piece, it really helps to see the placement of everything. It's difficult when everything is laying down flat. So, all right. You guys, I've got one more thing to say before we go, just because I forgot to mention this at the beginning. So at the end of this month, going right into February, we are taking a trip to Tucson. And we've talked about it a little bit. I've talked about it some. Sarah's talked about it some. And you guys, yes, Sherry, it could be amazing earrings. It would, oh, let's just hold it up and pretend for just a second. Sorry, I got off topic, right? Squirrel. <laughs> What a beautiful set of earrings this would be. Oh yeah, I'm feeling that. That would be awesome. So anyway, Tucson, you guys, we're taking a Tucson adventure. It's gonna be the first full week of February. So February 4th, I'm gonna be teaching some classes. It will be me, Sarah James, and Meredith Roddy. We're hanging out at Tohona Chul, which is a really amazing, beautiful botanical garden that is out in the desert in Tucson, you guys. It's gonna be a great experience. We're gonna have lots of fun. We're gonna to make tons of jewelry. We are going to eat some wonderful food and we're gonna take a guided tour of the botanical gardens. I cannot wait to go. If Tucson is on your bucket list, let us know. Uh, Sarah has been working on some travel packages to make it so that you can get the tickets to the event and you know if you're struggling finding flights and hotels and you know and your budget is this let us work with you let us help you kind of you know figure all that out come hang out with it's it's going to be a great time there's going to be food <laughs> Right? Like, all you have to say is, we're going to Tucson to eat, and I'm there. So there's going to be great food. It's going to be a great time to hang out and just enjoy each other's company and create some really fun, beautiful pieces of jewelry. I can't wait to go. I cannot wait to see some of you there. I know some of you have already gotten your tickets. If you've not gotten your tickets yet, do that now because the tickets will sell out. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Check it out over on the Jesse James V's website. You can get all the information there. There is a little pull down menu. It says, join us in Tucson. Click on that and it'll bring up all the information that you need. And if you have any questions, definitely reach out to me, reach out to Sarah. Let us know what questions you've got. And uh, let's talk about going on an adventure, shall we? Might just be the very first one of 2020, who knows? So stay tuned. Who knows where this year is going to go? I think it's going to be a great one. Cannot wait. All right. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day, you guys. I'm so happy that you joined me here on this second day of 2020. Cheers to you. Happy New Year and many, many more Thursday tutorials to come. I cannot wait. Have a wonderful afternoon, and I will see you guys tomorrow on Sarah Ellis Designs at 1 p.m. If not, I will see you same time, same place here next week.